Yo guys, this is the Adobe Flash Player. Back when I was a young little gamer, Flash was on top of the world. It was PlayStation 2, Xbox, GameCube, and the Flash Player. With just a simple internet connection, you had access to endless hours of free games and animations. <laughs> what a time to be alive. But you want to hear something kind of sad? The Adobe Flash Player is no longer supported. All of those endless hours of free games and animations can no longer be watched and played like they used to. And you know, I loved Flash. I made quite a few 2D games and animations in my day. They were very fun to make. So today, we're going to make another animation in tribute to the death of the Flash Player. But there is a pretty big caveat to this. Making all those projects taught me that 2D animation has one major flaw. Let me play one of my favorite animations I made for you to see if you can figure out what that flaw is for yourself. Did you, did you catch that? The problem is that it's not a 3D animation. Yes. Just look at these 3D animations. Boom, boom, pop, oh, bow, mm, boom, ooh. Amazing. Why would you not want to add an extra dimension to your animations? So today, not only are we gonna create a new animation to pay tribute to the death of the Flash player, but we're also gonna make a 3D animation. And, <laughs> and no, 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 no. I don't wanna use some old boring Stone Age technology like a mouse and keyboard. We need something that feels as intuitive as the pencil. Technology of the future. Say it with me now, virtual reality. Yeah, that's the spirit, but VR Flash does not exist, so if we want to do this, we're going to have to make the app ourselves. But real quick before we begin, to all you VR enthusiasts out there foaming at the mouth saying, but what about Google Tilt Brush? <laughs> you really think I wouldn't do my research for such a project? Tilt Brush oddly does not support frame by frame 3D animation. The one app you would expect to have it, and they are more disappointing than my upload schedule. So let us begin. First things first, we have to, of course, get our hands on a VR headset. Now, I've owned the original Oculus for quite some time now, but the truth is, this thing has just been sitting here. The two times that I've set it up, the wires always annoyed the living hell out of me. It just really broke immersion for me. And so I ran to Best Buy and picked up an Oculus Quest. And VR fanboys, listen. It's just you and I right now. I'd be willing to play VR games with Virtual Boy graphics if that meant getting rid of the wires. Yeesh, good riddance. But anywho, once I got through the setup and all that, it was time to figure out how to develop some VR apps. Unity 3D is always on top of their game, and I was able to effortlessly download an Oculus made demo scene for Unity to try on my quest. And if this works out well, then everything should be smooth sailing from here. So I exported out the demo for the quest, grabbed my Oculus, plugged in a USB-C cable into its hole, grabbed the other end, plugged the USB-A into my computer, and I waited. And I waited. And what the hell is going on? I unplugged, plugged it back in, nothing. Tried to find the device via the terminal, nothing. Check my drivers for updates, nothing. Ah. I do a quick Google search, and of course everyone is having the same issue. Because as far as I was able to understand it, there's no official way to install apps into the Quest unless you go through the official Oculus Store. So I had to follow all of this in order to get it working. Fun stuff. I'm sure it's just some like competition deterrent, but hey, little do they know, you and I, we know how to Google search. We're big brained. Okay. Now with that waste of time out of the way, we got the demo onto the quest, and it's working just as expected. Beautiful. <sighs> it's time to duel. I started by transforming the demo into being more aligned with the vision in my head for this app, and right out the gate, I was running into issues regarding grabbing and manipulating objects. You see, the demo came with code that takes care of all that stuff for you on the most basic level. But it just took a while for me to get the hang of using it. But after about 30 minutes of trial and error, 
I finally got the hang of it. And I was manipulating objects like a pro. These are completely new objects with a bunch of different shapes, sizes, and whatnot. And once all that checked out, the challenge of coding for VR was sadly pretty much over. Because once you figure out how to work with new inputs, no matter what the technology is, the rest of the work is just using basic programming logic. And so with that, I added a frame scrolling feature for animation that allows you to scrub through time, but it was too hard to tell what was going on, so I then added an onion skinning feature that shows the previous frames. Then I wanted to make more intricate objects so I added parenting. Then I wanted to be able to make a snowman so I added object scaling. Then I wanted to be able to make a little tree environment so I added different shapes and color. And yo, I was getting a little excited at this point. So I made a little ping pong example. And the project at this point was pretty much done. However, there's something that I have been hiding from you this whole time. So meet Josea. Josea here works for a company called Honeypot. And Honeypot is a company that focuses on getting developers jobs. Now Josea was in town for a week to follow me around and shoot a little documentary. And at this point of development, he had to leave and go home. So we called up a few people to try out our flash butt in VR just to get their thoughts on it and wrap up the documentary. I can't wait. So if I had these things and this, uh huh, how would I be able to do this? You did it, man. <laughs> <laughs> Overall, everything went pretty well. Their experiences were pretty smooth. Granted, I didn't have like any tutorial or how-to screen or anything like that. Trying to give people instructions on what to do when you can't see what they're looking at is <laughs> a lot more challenging than you think. But yeah, there are only a couple of bugs that somehow snuck back in. Like the onion skinning was supposed to disappear in play mode, but for some reason it didn't. And the parenting and rotation ended up being a little weird. But hey, whatever. Jose eventually left, and now whatever becomes of the main documentary is out of my control. But link to his documentary is in the description. Make sure to open up a new tab to give it a look-see. After this video ends, of course. Don't you dare screw up my retention time. <laughs> However, between you and I, I do believe that it's time to use this Adobe Flash, but in VR, so that we can make a little animated masterpiece that I can hang up next to my archived animations. Are you ready but wait first this video is brought to you by rayman legends <laughs> look stupid jokes are stupid all right let's just make this masterpiece already here's the room i'm using for vr yes it took a while to make this and yes there were still a lot of bugs but without further ado i present to you androids with apple I really enjoyed our first date. You're probably like the most fun person I've dated in the last 20 years. Yeah, I think we have amazing chemistry. Let's do this again sometime. <laughs> I don't think it's gonna work out. And there you have it, Adobe Flash, but in VR. I seriously can't believe that no one has done this already before. Guys, you know what that means? It means that we are pioneering. Gabriel, Gabriel, I have something to show you. Forrest, what is this? An app named Quill has already made exactly what you were trying to make, and their software is far superior to yours. Maybe you should have looked up VR apps beyond just Tilt Rush. 